Of the large cast of characters in Kento Miura's Berserk, none are more controversial than Griffith. While some see him as a victim of fate who had no choice but to do as he did, he's also despised by so much of the community that the phrase, Griffith did nothing wrong, is seen as more of an attempt to incite outrage or have a contrarian opinion rather than a valid, defensible position. A popular interpretation of Griffith's character is that he's evil incarnate, motivated primarily by selfish ambition to become king, with little regard for the people who die as a result. This can be seen in YouTube videos with overwhelmingly positive reception, where Griffith is labeled as unambiguously evil, while any attempts to sympathize or defend him are met with mass disapproval. A video by the user Psychosocialism even argues that Griffith exhibits the dark triad of psychology, a framework developed by philosophers Paulus and Williams to define the three most prominent offensive personalities of human behavior. In Sitchless Defending Griffith, Why He Did Nothing Wrong, he claims that this unhinged, vitriolic hate for anyone who offers a hint of nuance to Griffith's character undermines the powerful messages and themes Mira weaved into the story's subtext. This video will analyze the different interpretations of Griffith through the key aspects of his character, his dream, his humanity, and his ultimate decision to sacrifice Guts and the Band of the Hawk to reach a conclusion on his morality. In order to determine whether Griffith is evil, a definition of it must be determined. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche argued, if agents lacked free will, they would not be able to be held responsible for their actions. Therefore, in a world like Berserk, where all lies in the currents of causality, as Void puts it, it would stand to reason that all of its characters are nothing but products of their circumstance and pawns of fate. However, Nietzsche's moral nihilism is contested by many contemporary thinkers, such as Claudia Card, who argued that judgments of evil often indicate a healthy recognition that one has been treated unjustly, or Eve Garrett and David McNaughton who argue that it would be wrong to question descriptions of evil by victims of atrocious crimes. The series itself even explicitly uses the word evil to describe the actions of Griffith after his transformation into Femto, who commits an especially atrocious crime, and questions the absolute power of fate as the god hand themselves are stated to not be omniscient in the flow of causality. The fact that the thread of causality was severed when the Count refused to sacrifice his daughter at a fated causal junction to continue living also indicates that Griffith is a free agent who is culpable for his decision to sacrifice. So given that Griffith is accountable for his actions, this video will use the psychologist Steve Taylor's definition of good, being the ability to empathize with other people, feel compassion, and put their needs before their own, to represent what many readers of Berserk claim that Griffith is missing. The main debate around Griffith's character surrounds whether his dialogue should be taken at face value. The major reason people see Griffith as evil is that his dream is stated in a way where it seems to be explicitly self-centered, making it an unworthy goal for the amount of suffering it caused. The Violi also claims that he's narcissistic because his dreams are entirely centered around his own desire. Psychosocialism goes further to say that the strong conviction in his ability to achieve his dream also exhibits narcissism due to him being deluded with absolute confidence in a world where social mobility is extremely limited. Sislet, on the other hand, argues that this interpretation of his dream is a dishonest oversimplification of his goals and that his desire to succeed despite the lack of social mobility is precisely why his goal is noble. He cites the monologue Griffith gives in his introduction to the story, filled with longing, where he voices his spite at the aristocracy for allowing so many bodies to pile up on the battlefield, and how that's what he's fighting to dismantle, shown in the fact that he acts as a voice for this power by rising to the social hierarchy along with the soldiers. By interpreting Griffith's dream as a desire to overcome the feudal system that reduces the life of a soldier to no more than a silver coin, and establish an egalitarian meritocracy, Sislet presents his dream as a worthy goal since maintaining the status quo would cause more suffering than fighting to change it. The Violi also interprets Griffith's dream speech about not seeing his soldiers as friends literally, claiming they mean nothing more to him than crucial assets. Sichlet vehemently disagrees, pointing to Castle's flashback, where Griffith's guilt over the death of a child soldier is juxtaposed with him selling his own body to support the army and cutting into his arms and trying to repress his guilt. Meanwhile, Psychosocialism argues that although this scene makes it seem as if he cares for his men through self-sacrifice, it's really just his Machiavellianism taking the most logical approach in working towards his dream, and that he harms himself because he has to dirty himself. The Violi and Psychosocialism also point toward Griffith smiling at the news of Adonis' death, another example of a child dying for the sake of his dream, indicating that the death of the boy in Castle's flashback never really bothered him. In Beatham's analysis, The Brightest Thing, she explains Griffith's contradicting reactions to the two events as him getting better at repressing his guilt, since the alternative would be to believe that he became a completely different person after the boy soldier's death. She writes how this would make the entire flashback sequence comedically pointless, and notes how his feelings of guilt and self-loathing show up later in the story, such as when asking Gus whether he thinks he's cruel. Another highly contested topic regarding Griffith's capacity to care for others is his relationship with Guts. The Violi and Psychosocialism both agree that Griffith's possessive attitude towards Guts 
namely with how he repeatedly says, you belong to me, contributes to him being a narcissist who's unable to truly care about anyone else. Psychosocialism claims that the only reason Griffith was so devastated when God specified him in a duel to leave the band was his defeat was an utter shattering of self-concept for him, that it was this distress from having his pride shattered that caused him to throw away his dream. He further went on to assert that the only reason he obsessed over Gus in the dungeon was that he broke his world by beating him. While the Violi acknowledges that he developed an emotional attachment to Gus and considered him a true friend, he emphasizes how his defeat shattered his honor of being an undefeated god among men. Sichlet rejects the viewpoint that Griffith only cared for Gus as a tool, pointing out that his risking his life, and by extension his dream, to save Gus on multiple occasions wouldn't be something a sociopath with no empathy would do. Psychosocialism tries to disprove the idea that Griffith ever considered Gus's feelings, citing Griffith's attempt to strangle Gus, and claimed it proved that he was a psychopath for blaming Gus instead of himself for his downfall. Sichlet counters this claim by acknowledging that while Griffith was initially filled with spite towards Gus, his love for him overcame it when he lowered his hand to caress Gus's arm, along with the fact that he still tried to help Gus later on in his broken state. The most controversial event regarding the morality of Griffith's character is the Eclipse. Stiebel fiercely debate the motivation behind the sacrifice and whether he can even be considered the same character after his transformation. The Violi state that the sacrifice was Griffith relating to his selfish desire because the Godhand showed him that he never really cared that his men would die for his dream, since he had always been walking on the path of corpses. He goes on to claim that after he was able to shed the emotional limitations of his former life to the transformation, he was finally able to show his true colors as the cruel and unfeeling Femto. Sichlet asserts the opposite, that Femto represents the superior, uncaring leader that he wishes he could be at heart, but could never be because of the underlying humanity of his true self. Sichlet also disagrees with the God Hand's manipulation of Griffith using the deaths of his men shows that he never cared for them. On the contrary, he argues that the God Hand showing him visions of his fallen comrades instead of promises of fame or glory proves he does care for them. He had to keep going because he cares too much about their dreams to stop, and from the death of the first soldier he's been bound to continue the path for his dream. In this case, Griffith's decision to sacrifice the surviving members of the Hawk cannot be seen as evil, since his motivation is rooted in the empathetic desire to give meaning to the thousands that had already given up their lives for his dream. Sichlet's perspective goes completely against the idea that Griffith can be morally responsible for the actions of the Femto, as his metamorphosis artificially stripped him of his empathy. In my opinion, Griffith did his best to live his life through Nietzsche's moral framework by convincing himself and everyone else that he only cared about his dream, but he was truly motivated more by feelings of love and compassion. The amount of evidence showing that he truly cared about his men as more than tools is overwhelming, with the text literally stating how Gus shines more brightly than his dream. I feel like the idea that Griffith was always a narcissistic sociopath is silly, as it would just make him a boring character of evil. Nietzsche also proposed the Ubermensch as an ideal for humanity to evolve into, where one creates and imposes their own values in life, and transcends the binary of good and evil. Griffith embodied this with his grand speeches of living completely for himself, and the dark setting of the series makes it easy to understand why the concept is so appealing. But no matter how much Griffith wanted to embody the Ubermensch to change the world and give his life meaning, he couldn't stop himself from feeling the guilt and emotional attachment that would threaten his dream. By accepting the sacrifice, he finally manages to bury his fragile human heart by supernatural means and is able to become the true Ubermensch he always wanted to be, free from all the attachment and empathy that held him back from achieving his dream which is why Femto's first action after being born is so over-the-top and irredeemable. The thing that everyone hates really isn't Griffith, but the ideal Ubermensch self that he could never become on his own. Through the distinction between Griffith and Femto, and the horrifying nature of the Eclipse, Berserk conveys the message to embrace our humanity, that love and empathy aren't weaknesses to hide or repress, that to be beyond good and evil is to be evil. thousands of enemies you're the only one who made me forget my dream i sacrifice